بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Brothers and sisters and friends السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we are going to be discussing the absurdity of life without Allah <تصفيق> Brothers, sisters and friends, this is not a rational argument, this is not a logical argument, it is a existential argument. What does this mean? It basically means, what does it mean for you and for I and for everyone to exist? So in the context of today's session, we want to be asking the question, what does it mean for me to exist without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And hopefully when we talk about these things to the wider society, it opens the window of opportunity for people to reach Allah, to find Allah, to find the truth of Al-Islam. So I want to go through certain points with you today. Number one, without Allah, there is no ultimate hope. Number two, without Allah, there is no ultimate value. Number three, without Allah, there is no ultimate purpose. Number four, without Allah, there is no ultimate meaning. Number five, without Allah, we don't have adequate explanations for things like the cosmos, the universe, and our own existence, consciousness. And finally, without Allah, there is no true happiness. Without Allah, there is no ultimate hope. Arthur Schopenhauer, who was a pessimist philosopher, in one of his essays, he summarizes exactly what I want to elaborate in this section. We are like lambs in a field, disporting themselves under the eye of the butcher, who chooses out first one and then another for his prey. So it is that in our good days, we are all unconscious of the evil fate may have presently in store for us. Sickness, poverty, mutilation, loss of sight or reason. No little part of the torment of existence lies in this. That time is continually pressing upon us, never letting us take breath, but always coming after us like a taskmaster with a whip. If at any moment time stays his hand, it is only when we are delivered over to the misery of boredom. In fact, the conviction that the world and man is something that had better not have been is of a kind to fill us with indulgence towards one another. Nay, from this point of view, we might well consider the proper form of address to be not Monsieur, Sir, mine Herr, but my fellow sufferer, soci malorum, companion de miseres. Brothers and sisters and friends, when I was typing this out, I was actually crying. Because, number one, I respected Arthur Schopenhauer after this, because he understood, as an atheist, if you remove Allah away from reality, you don't have ultimate hope. And also, as an atheist... He was honest. So I take my hat off to him, as we say. Think about it, brothers and sisters and friends. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what can most of the people on this planet who live on less than $2 a day, most of the people on this planet who are starving, by the way, according to UNICEF, 22,000 people starve every day. And the majority of these people, brothers and sisters and friends, are children under five years old. What about the people who suffer from illness, cancer? What about people who die because of the natural disasters in the world? What about people who suffer from 
various injustices via dictators and despots. I mean, the list couldn't go on and on and on. But the point is, where is the hope for these people? Where is the hope? If there is no Allah, no divine accountability, no perspective of at the end of the day, everything is going to be settled, there's going to be justice, there's going to be some kind of hope, maybe in the forms of Jannah or Paradise. So in reality, according to an atheist worldview, or in reality, brothers and sisters and friends, if you move Allah away from the picture, then there is no ultimate hope. As Arthur Schopenhauer said, that the proper form of address should be, not sir, but my fellow sufferer. So without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no hope. As Allah says in the Quran, in chapter 12, verse 87, certainly no one despairs of Allah's life-giving mercy, except the people who reject the truth, the people who disbelieve. And this is the case, because hope is related to mercy. If we reject the truth, we reject Allah, then where is the mercy? Now let's talk about the second point. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no ultimate value. Now, imagine you are in a room and you have all your favorite toys, gadgets, all your favorite people, families and friends, favorite food. I mean, it's bliss on tap in this room. But in this room, brothers and sisters, you know you're not going to escape. In this room, you just have five minutes. Just five minutes in this room, brothers and sisters. And after those five minutes, everything is going to be destroyed. Your toys, your gadgets, your friends, your family, including yourself. What value do any of these things have? Think about it now. What value do any of these things have if they're going to be destroyed in five minutes and there is no hereafter? It's just gone, finished. You know that these things don't have any ultimate value because everything is going to perish. Now, what's five minutes and 75 years? It's just time, brothers and sisters and friends. So in reality, this analogy gives us an understanding that this life doesn't really have any ultimate value because it's just going to perish. And our lives are like the analogy of the room. We're in this world, to call it the room, with all the goods in it and all our gadgets and toys and families and friends. And it's not five minutes, but it's maybe many more minutes that equate to 75 years. If we're just going to perish, if everything perishes, then what value does it have? Rather than it's just being annihilated by time itself. So brothers and sisters and friends, there is no ultimate value unless there is an akhirah, unless there is something that gives this world some value, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, in his noble book, in chapter 57, verse 20. And in the hereafter is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And what is this worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion? So intrinsically, this world doesn't have any true value unless it is a milestone in time for us to reach the eternal life, which is Jannah or Jahannam, paradise or hellfire. So from this perspective, if everything just perishes, then what ultimate value does it have? But from an Islamic perspective, it has value from the point of view that it's our space, it's our time, it's our platform, it's our abode for a limited period in order to reach the eternal life. And that's where the value lies. As Allah says that the worldly life is just mere play. 
but its only value is in order to use the world and its toys to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because outside of that, then it's just pointless really, isn't it? It's like being in a room for five minutes and after five minutes, you know, everything is going to perish and you have your friends, your family, your favorite gadgets and toys. What ultimate value do these things have? Nothing. Also, brothers and sisters and friends, the next point is there is no ultimate purpose without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعِنَّ تَلْحَبُونَ And where are you going? Where am I going? Where are we going? And that's in chapter 81, verse 26. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in chapter 3, verse 190, Our Lord, our Lord, you have not created us without purpose. Also in chapter 10, verse 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah did not create all of these without true purpose. He explains his signs for those who understand. And this is true, brothers and sisters. Just think about it. This chair that I'm sitting on is inanimate. It doesn't have a ruh, it doesn't have a soul, a consciousness. But it has a purpose. And that purpose is to maintain my weight. Is to maintain my weight, brothers and sisters. Also, if we attribute purpose to something inanimate, like a chair, then why don't we attribute purpose to our own selves? Something with a soul or a consciousness with feelings and emotions and something that we truly value over the chair. Doesn't it make more sense that maybe we have a purpose? Because surely when we make things like a chair that's inanimate, it cannot feel and talk to us and engage with us, yet we attribute purpose to such a thing? It's something to think about. Oh.